And when you're already rich, to make your money by encouraging people to get rich by trading. The Millionaire Booklet's gonna give you eight steps, and guess what? And all you have to do is pay for shipping. First, you're gonna pay shipping and handling. <laughs> <laughs> it is really stupid. Hey, are you looking to improve your life? Do you want to change your current situation? Do you want to be liked? Do you want people to notice you more? Do you want more happiness? How many videos have you seen that fill you with hope and optimism and make you feel like you can take on the world? That all your dreams are just a step away. If I sum up everything being said repeatedly in all self-help books, trust yourself, focus on what you want, stay fit, never give up, and see problems as opportunity. It's a familiar feeling, but what happens after that? What happens to all the energy and excitement you feel? Maybe you work hard for a few hours or perhaps a couple of days only to feel exhausted and fall back into old patterns. If you push yourself today to work for three hours, but what about tomorrow? And the day after that? We are all attracted to videos that promise to tell us that one thing can change your life, one mindset shift that will make you rich, one change that will fix your relationship. It's that easy fix to your pain. Self-help makes you feel good. There's no doubt about it. After every self-help book that you read off and motivational video that you watch, there is a surge of dopamine that rises straight into your brain. I mean an addictive side of dopamine. On the back of your constant purchases and your constant chasing of motivation someone is profiting, someone is winning, not you. The terrifying reality is that almost every company in our modern society exploits this deeply rooted reward system by putting it on steroids. There are millions of experts specifically designing their products and internet platforms to release as much dopamine as possible in order to make us come back over and over again. That feeling of accomplishing something after reading each book made me feel incredible. And after finishing that self-help book I would go straight onto Amazon and order a bunch of new ones. They give us constant dopamine hits. That's why social media platforms switch from chronological feeds to an algorithm-based feed and that's why video games have levels and ranking systems to keep us coming back. As we jump from one post to the next one and from one level to the next one, we simply have to consume and are instantly rewarded with massive hits of dopamine. But we live in a world which is designed to stimulate our emotions in order to maximize profits. That's why ultimately dopamine controls us on a daily basis, and that's why billions of people unconsciously focus their whole life on consuming instead of creating the lives they actually want to live. Fire walking is like listening to a motivational speech. You go home inspired and excited and all jazzed up. But you wake up the next day the same person you were the day before, because you haven't truly accomplished anything. The self-help industry loves to promise easy fixes for all your mental health problems. In fact, this is what keeps them selling in such large numbers. The business model of many self-help gurus is dependent on two connected ideas. Sell feel-good content to a wide audience. Get repeat customers. This is why you often hear them talk about their exclusive newsletter, ebook, video, or seminar. They've built a customer base that is loyal to their framework of solutions. In 2022, the self-improvement industry was worth over $13.7 billion. Someone is making a profit from your pain by selling you pretty dreams, and they don't want to sell you a one-time product. They want you to keep coming back. Ask yourself have I consumed more from this industry than I have actually put into action. A patient healed is a customer lost. This is the mindset of the self-care industry. Reading self-help books can be in itself a form of procrastination. It's easy to get caught up in a cycle of books, seminars, and videos without really addressing the issues in your life. It can become an addiction of its own. Often, seeking out self-help content is a symptom rather than a solution. The biggest issue with self-help is it tend to make people believe they have issues that they really don't have. Moral of the story, just go out and leave. Don't over-obsess with improving your life without living it. It's like reading a cookbook but never actually cooking. All the stuff we do that makes us feel good about our progress without actually making any meaningful progress. It feels like progress. Instead of getting a short motivation, we have to focus on being consistent discipline in our work. If you want self-help why would you read a book written by somebody else? That's not self-help, that's help. So, you won't try to hack your way to success. Hacking is great when you need to perform a simple task. Hacking is worthless when you need to acquire a complex skill or accomplish a huge goal. People, I am excited. I can sense a change in the air tonight. You are all going to start living. Really living. Yay! Living! Living! Be like
like the boy. Be like boy. Be like boy. Just the ladies. Be like boy. Be like boy. Now the seniors in the back. We like Roy. We like Roy. <laughs> He's just peddling a bunch of easy answers. And how? <laughs> Please, everyone in town is acting like me. So why does it suck? It's simple, Bart. You've defined yourself as a rebel, and in the absence of a repressive milieu, your societal niche has been co-opted. I see. Ever since that self-help guy came to town, you've lost your identity. You've fallen through the cracks of our quick-fix, one-hour photo instant oatmeal society. What's the answer? Well, this is your chance to develop a new and better identity. May I suggest good-natured doormat? Sounds good, sis. Just tell me what to do. Oh, boy. If only Bart had been a better role model for everyone. That's not fair. The lesson here is that self-improvement is better left to people who live in big cities. No! Self-improvement can be achieved, but not with a quick fix. It's a long, arduous journey of personal and spiritual discovery. That's what I've been saying. We're all fine the way we are. Ooh, it's that new show about the policeman who solves crimes in his spare time. Crank it, Homer. You busted up that crack house pretty bad, McGonagall. Did you really have to break so much furniture? You tell me, Chief. You had a pretty good view from behind your desk. Ah, uh, McGonagall, eases the pain. You're off the case, McGonagall. You're off your case, Chief. What does that mean, exactly? It means he gets results, you stupid Chief! Dad, sit down. Oh, I'm sorry.